What's your body count? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And no, I'm not referring to your drunken escapades. While those might be entertaining to listen to as well, I'm actually talking about how many people have you gotten into knife collecting? That's right. How many people are you responsible for their eventual financial downfall? Put it in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, go ahead and show the like button some love. It's free and it tells YouTube that you enjoy my content. Today we're talking about this guy. This is the Midgard's Messer Little Valen. You heard that right, Little Valen. In my overview that happened a couple months ago, I called it the Little Devalen. Here's the thing, I'm not good at Nordic. I didn't take lessons, I didn't listen in class. It's the Little Valen. And if you're interested in what that stands for, Now that we've gotten that out of the way, in the last couple of months, a lot of stuff happened. I've been very, very busy, and then, lo and behold, it turns out that I did everything but rank it. I skipped the most important part, the part where I give you the context that you need to decide if this knife deserves a spot in your EDC rotation, or even in your display case. You see... Grail or Garbage is a ranking system that I developed to give you that context. Here's how it works. We've got a leaderboard. The leaderboard consists of five categories that each knife is scored on. Those categories are materials, ergonomics, fidget factor, the lock, and of course, fit and finish. Each category is worth a max of up to 10 points. And at the end, we do a tiny bit of math, just a little bit. We add up those points and based on its final score, it's placed on our leaderboard and then we know for certain is it a grail or is it garbage so there i was searching for the definition of little valen in nordic on google and as google often does it came up with some extra things that I didn't really need to know about, but was kind of entertaining. So if you actually look at the Urban Dictionary definition of Little Valen, or Valen, as it's currently spelled, it comes up with this. I know, I got a pretty good laugh out of it too. Uh, regardless, guys, it's been too long that I've had this in my possession, and it's time that we go ahead and give it a rank. So I'll go ahead and pop the leaderboard up on the screen. For any of you who want to see what it's currently looking like, and I'll also link it down in the description below in case you're watching this months after this has come out. So the way that we're going to work this is we're going to go ahead and jump into materials. Now materials is heavily based off of the value of a knife. And I bring that up because if you look here, you'll notice that this one is serialized. They only made 200 of these. In fact, none of the knives that Midgard's Messer makes are really mass produced, at least none that I'm aware of. They're all out of limited runs, which means that if you see a design that you like from them, I hate to say it, but you should probably go ahead and buy it because there's no guessing if how long it'll be available or if they'll come out with a V2. If you see something you like, go out and get it because it's limited and they do a good job. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, the materials is heavily based on what it costs. And what does this cost? Well, it costs around $300. What do you get for your $300 in the material range? Well, the blade is CPM D2, full titanium handle scales. It's a frame lock with a milled titanium pocket clip, full body length titanium backspacer, and a really, really aggressive Tanto design. So, with all of that being said, you might be thinking 300 bucks and it's D2. Well, keep in mind, CPM D2 is not regular D2. They are miles apart. Regular D2 is what's called a ingot-based steel. And so the grain structure is unreliable. 
at best. CPM D2 is a powder metallurgy version of D2. And so you actually get a much better, much more consistent grain structure, which means that the edge is not going to have the typical chippy issues that regular D2 has. It has, is more tough than regular D2, and it's easier to get a precise edge on this knife with CPM D2. I actually really like it. It performs very similarly to CTS XHP. And so, yeah, if, if you still don't like D2, I totally get it. But, you know, CTS XHP performs really well, and so does CPM D2. So I really do like that blade steel. This is also quite a lot of titanium between the full body length backspacer, uh, the handle scales, and the pocket clip. It's a lot. Okay, this is not a light knife by any stretch of the imagination. And I'll go ahead and weigh it for you so you can see what I mean. This knife, by the way, this knife is less than seven inches long. So it's not a big knife. And to give you some perspective on how much it weighs, it comes in at 5.75 ounces. So yeah, it's not a small knife by any stretch of the means, but it's a lot of titanium. It's a lot of CPM D2. And so for those reasons, and because this is a limited model, the price doesn't really play a role. At the $300 price point, it's a collector's item that you could use if you want to, or it can sit in a case. Personally, this is one that I think is fun to carry, so I would use it, but you can't buy this specific one anymore. The only ones that are still available brand new are the ones with the regular drop point, but the Tanto version is no longer available. So the price doesn't play as big of a factor when we're talking about something in limited quantities because it's really just there to make sure that the people that want it get it. And yeah, so there it is. For those reasons, it's going to be getting an eight out of 10 for materials. Next up, we have ergonomics. How comfortable is it in the hand? Is it something that's easy to hold on to? Does the grips make sense? Uh, you know, does it leave any hot spots? Does it leave a lot to be desirable? You know what? And I've mentioned this on the other Midgard's Messer knives, but they do a phenomenal job of rounding off those corners. Those corners are rounded. Uh, so yes, it is a slab style construction, but with those rounded corners, it's way more comfortable than any other slab style construction handles uh, scale knife that I've actually held. Furthermore, look at this design for the jimping. The jimping has jimping. That's absolutely bananas. Okay. And that full body length backspacer also makes sure that there's none of your palms sinking into the scales or the space in between the scales. That's great. Another ergonomical thing is this pocket clip. Now the pocket clip, I'm not going to say is the most comfortable position for a pocket clip. I actually think that they would have been better served if they had the clip going straight down the middle and had this acting as a secondary over travel stop. So yeah, uh, you know, the, the clip isn't perfect and it's definitely not deep carry. You do have this much of the clip sticking out, but as far as ergonomics are concerned, it definitely doesn't get in the way. And a lot of that has to do with how your hands grip around on these scales with those rounded scales. The, the frag pattern style is only on one side of the handle scales. The other side is blank minus this pocket clip, which mirrors the style on the front. And so that's cool, but it also means that you don't have as much texture here on the back, which does lend to some better ergonomics. So the ergonomics on here are actually really good. Despite the fact that it's less than seven inches long, I can still get a full four finger grip on here without needing to choke up, without needing a lanyard. That's crazy to me because normally knives this size, I can't do that with, and I would need a lanyard and I would feel like it's small in the hands. So while this knife might not be very long, it doesn't necessarily feel small. And that's a bit of voodoo magic that I really, really appreciate. The ergonomics on here are really good. And for that reason, they're going to be getting an eight out of 10. Moving on to what is possibly my favorite category and many of your favorite category as well, we got to talk about the fidget factor. And the fidget factor revolves around a couple different things, things such as the pivot action, um, the detent, the lock. How easy is it to deploy? How much do you want to play with it? Is it something that takes a whole lot of thought to index? You know, is it fun? It, it's not always about deployment options, but while we're on that topic, let's talk about that. I don't know if this was advertised as it, but it, this is actually indeed a front flipper. 
So it's got these aggressive notches here at the top. And if you want, you can treat it like a front flipper. That's pretty cool. I don't think that is its primary deployment mechanism. It has this big fuller here. And so the reverse flick is perfect and effortless. And it doesn't necessarily take a whole lot of muscle to get that to fly out. It's running on bearings. And so the blade falls shut and it is a bit of a guillotine. There is no double clutch on here. So once you break that lock out, it's going to go ahead and fall shut. It's a heavy blade, heavy knife. So I wouldn't expect anything different. Uh, but you know, it's very fun to play with. It's kind of comical actually the fact that a knife this small is this heavy and has action that good. Like I don't need to wrist flick it. It's a bad habit that I have, but honestly, um, yeah, no, it deploys no problem. And it makes a really nice thwacking sound when it does deploy. And a lot of that has to do with this full length backspacer. So it actually has really good acoustics. So yeah, it's definitely fun to play with. Uh, it's something that I actually really enjoy carrying. And for those reasons, it's going to be getting an eight out of 10 for fidget factor. So we're now on to the lock. The lock is all about how, how well designed was it? And I get it. There's only an infinite amount of frame lock knives out there. You know, it seems like you go online and it's titanium frame lock, titanium frame lock, titanium frame lock. So how do you differentiate yourself when you're making another titanium frame lock? Well, there's a couple things that you have to do. You have to make sure that the lockup is solid. This lockup is very solid. There is absolutely no play. There is no pivot lash on this whatsoever. It's going to break the detent or it's not. Uh, that's perfect. As far as the lockup itself, when we look in here, it's going to come in right around 25% and it's 25% reliably. It's also not uncomfortable to actuate this lock. Uh, it's, it's very comfortable. And a lot of that has to do with the milling around the edges of that lock face where it's actually really, really nicely milled over. It does have a steel lock bar insert and over travel stop. And an extra added bonus is, is that that screw is the same size as the pivot screw, which is, you know, T8. So that's great. I'm a big fan of that. I think that the, the lock works really well. As far as a frame lock is concerned, a lot of frame locks are just uncomfortable for me to actuate all the time. Opening and closing, opening and closing. And then before you know it, I've got a fat blister on my thumb and I have to start using my left hand. Hate it when that happens. Anyways, for the lock, it's going to get an eight out of 10. And finally, we're on to the part which talks about how well manufactured was it? How well realized is the design? Did they hit the mark? Did they do a good job? Well, I'm gonna start off with talking about the thing that I don't like. I don't necessarily like the positioning of this pocket clip. For a small knife, I want it to fit inside as much pocket as possible. And having it right there means that you have this much knife sticking out of your pocket. And so that's the only thing that I really don't necessarily like. Um, another thing to mention is this is a thick knife. This is, you know, a very thick blade stock. And it's every bit as thick as the Midgard's Messer Thunrar, to give you an idea. These are chonky knives. Maybe it's a little bit thinner on the blade spine, but you get the picture. So yeah, it's, it's a thick boy. Um, a lot of people might actually think that that means that it doesn't cut well. And I got to say the cutting geometry on here is not meant for slicing paper, but you could definitely blast through some cardboard. This flat grind on the blade actually allows for that really well. And it does have some nice swedging here at the top. It's very robust all the way to the tip. The fact that they thought of putting jimping on top of jimping really makes my day. And I really like that. In fact, I might name this video, the jimping has jimping. I, I can't help it. The fact that it has a full length backspacer is very well appreciated because it also adds to the ergonomics and also the look. And it also serves the function of protecting the edge on your blade so that it doesn't get dinged up by coins and keys and other crap that happens to be in your pockets. I actually saw a video where one of the guys from Midgard's Messer USA used this as a throwing knife and they threw it into 
a board and even with this thick thick tip it stuck and it was so well suited in that moment to be a throwing knife now i don't have those skills and i don't suggest doing that with knives that are you know only made out of 200 but if that's your thing i'm not going to judge you i just probably wouldn't do it myself i just thought it was cool because for a knife to be adequately used as a throwing knife it's got to have good balance and the balance point on here is right at that midway point right there where your index finger is going to rest that's great i enjoy the fact that it gives you suggestions where to put your hands but honestly it doesn't really even matter because there's not a whole lot of real estate here you have one option put your hand on the knife and if you want you can do a saber grip and that saber grip look at how far up that jimping goes they know that your thumb is going to be resting right here near the tip. As far as being able to use this as a knife, this secondary edge where this, this edge meets this one is perfect for draw cuts. You have so much pressure right there. This is going to slice through whatever once you get it down and you're doing a cut. That is perfect for that. I really like the fact that if you needed to, you've got so much thick steel here at the top, you could actually use this to really dig into some material before you start cutting away. That's not just for looks, that is actually something that is utility based. The fact that the fuller is not just there for looks, but is also usable, means that they were thinking about how people are going to use and carry this knife. The flicking motion on here is perfect for deploying this knife. And then finally, I also like the fact that the design shows this half frag pattern on the, the show scale and then not at all on the lock side, but it does reflect on the clip. I don't mind the shape of the clip and I don't even necessarily mind that it's not deep carry. Again, I just kind of wish that it was centered. I think that that would actually add a bit more to the ergonomics and it would also allow for a bit of a deeper carry. Now, that's a style choice. I get it. And I actually think that the aesthetics on here look fantastic. This knife is very well, well built. There's no sharp edges that shouldn't be sharp. As far as the centering, the centering is bang on, but then again, there's no room on either side of that blade for it to not be bang on. Uh, but you could tell if it wasn't because it would rub against the blade and it really doesn't rub against the blade. Not sure what I was doing there. This has become one of my favorite small knives. I don't like small knives. I like knives that fit in my hand and this isn't necessarily one that I would think would, and yet it does. As I mentioned before, that's quite a bit of voodoo. Look, my hand is not hanging out over the side. And then to have that jimping that extends all the way, it's just marvelous. I've been rambling, but in the end, the fit and finish is absolutely good enough for me to give it yet again an eight out of 10. So we're at the point where we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of math. Not everyone's favorite subject, but what are we looking at here? Well, it's eights across the board. Every single category got an eight out of 10. It's better than average in every single category. I've used this to cut cardboard. I've used this to cut paper. I've carried this in my pocket. And while it might be too heavy for some, five ounces is not too heavy for me. I have plenty of knives that are in that range. And so for me, that's normal. I understand if many people would look at this and say, you know what, that's not my jam, but it's made in a limited quantity, which means that if it is your jam and you pick one of these up, you get the pleasure of knowing that not everyone can have one of these. And by the time many, many people discover this, they'll already be gone. So I highly suggest that you check out MidgardsMesserUSA.com to go ahead and pick one up if you want one because they still have the drop point version of this. So if you're not into Tantos and you'd rather have this in a drop point, as of right now, they are still available. I highly suggest checking them out. I will link them below. Their website is live. Guys, that's all I got for you. 40 out of 50. It's not, not quite a grail, but it's definitely on the super high end of the recommend list. I really like this knife, and I think that a lot of people would because it's small. It's going to fit in your EDC pouches just fine, but it's also big enough to get the job done, girthy enough to give you the confidence that it's not going to break and that it's not a toy, and well designed enough so that if you want to just look at it, just look at it, you can do that too. Another beautiful piece from Midgard's Messer, they're linked down below, they did not sponsor this this episode um, but they make good knives 
and they do a great job of breaking the mold. Guys, that's all I got for you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, there's a button for you too. And if you want to catch up on the next Grailer Garbage, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.